Hey guys, it says solve for X. And this right here is something weird I've never seen before. I'm assuming it means X can equal zero, A can equal zero, and B can equal zero, but also that A can't equal B, and also that X can't equal A or X can't equal B. So I'm gonna assume it means all these things at the same time. Let me know what you think of this notation, but let's just assume it means this. Let's copy this down. I wanna get rid of the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply everything by the least common denominator. That is A times B times X. So A times A is A squared, and then we still have the BX and it's still over X. X. And then ABX times X ends up being ABX squared, and it's still over A. And this is going to be equal to A and then the B squared this time, because we have B times B, and then there's still an X, and that's over X. And then this ends up being ABX squared over B. For this first term, these two X's cancel out, which gives us A squared B. For this one, the A's cancel out, which gives us BX squared. For this one, the X's cancel, which gives us AB squared. And for this one, the B's cancel, which gives us AX squared. So I want to set this equal to zero. So let's subtract AB squared from both sides, and let's subtract AX squared from both sides. On the right-hand side, this is going to be zero. And on the left-hand side, we have all four of these terms. There are four terms set equal to zero, so let's try factor by grouping. The common term for these two is AB. AB times what gives us A squared B, that's A. And then AB times what gives us negative AB squared, that's negative B. And then for this one, let's pull out a negative X squared. Negative X squared times what gives us this, so that's just A. And then negative X squared times what gives us this, that's negative B. And this is still equal to zero. Since these two are the same, we know factor by grouping is going to work. We're going to factor out this A minus B term, and then what's left is the AB minus X x squared, and this is still equal to zero. So from here, we know either this equals zero or this equals zero. So to clean this up, if I add b to both sides, I get a equals b. And then for this one, I can add x squared to both sides. And if I square root both sides, I get x equals square root of ab. So to check these, this says a equals b. That contradicts what we have up here. So this is not a possibility. And this square root of ab doesn't contradict anything. So that is the answer to our question, x equals square root of ab. How exciting. If you guys want to try more stuff like this, I have these pages on antimath.com. Links are in the description. Let me know if I'm missing anything or if you have any requests.